एवरीवन वेलकम टू बिग डेटा थॉट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट स्पार्क स्ट्रीमिंग दिस इज़ वन टॉपिक व्हिच मेनी पीपल आर इंटरेस्टेड इन बिकॉज देर इज वाइल बिल्डिंग डेटा प्लेटफॉर्म्स वी हैव सीन यूज केसेस वेयर वी वांट टू इंजेस्ट डेटा इन नियर रियल टाइम एंड स्पार्क स्ट्रीमिंग इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमन मेथड्स दैट पीपल यूज सो वी वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट इज स्ट्रीमिंग यूज केसेज डिसएडवाटेजेज एंड ऑल्सो सम कोर कॉन्सेप्ट सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड first of all let's start with what is stream processing stream processing means we are talking about a data that is continuously getting ingested so it is a continuous ingestion of new data to compute a result the input data here is unbounded there is no predetermined beginning or end because we are talking about streams of data coming in small chunks of data coming in in near real time so it is pretty much unbounded with no beginning and no end you can consider this as a series of events that arrive at the stream processing system it can be web clicks it can be data coming in from different third party systems it can be uh, some sensor data that we are capturing and sending it can be any type of data basically which is coming as an unbounded in an unbounded form and getting continuously ingested use cases now some of the most common use cases can be notification and alerting like i said if it is sensor data let's say there are some machines uh, which are expensive drilling machines or some other machines which have been installed somewhere and there are sensors on those machines which continuously send some kind of temperature data which helps us in uh, alerting if the temperature goes beyond a certain point so this can be one of the use cases where a uh, stream processing can be used for notification and alerting it can be used for real time reporting it can be used for incremental etl meaning where we want to have small chunks of data coming in and we actually want to ingest them then and there rather than waiting and doing a batch ingestion it can be updating data in real time into a server real time decision making where you want to look at the previous example that i gave let's say there is sensor data coming in and you immediately want to make some decision based on the temperature or any kind of data the sensor is sending so there are multifold use cases these are just some of the common examples of where it can be used the stream processing now there are some disadvantages of using a stream um, uh, using stream processing or ingestion which is near real time rather than batch one is there can be situations where there is out of order data based on the application time stamp basically here we have a time stamp which tells us when the event came in sometimes one of the events may get delayed and the order in which the events were coming may be disturbed so we need to handle that maintaining a large amount of states because we are getting very small small micro batches of data how do you do state management that can be complicated supporting a very high data throughput ensuring that there is no load imbalance or stragglers means if we are ingesting data let's say we are using a azure event hub or any technology to do uh, stream ingestion and processing it is possible that it gets uh, there are certain events that arrive later that the queue can be throttled so there can be load imbalance all that needs to be taken care of responding events at low latency now since we are ingesting data in near real time we also want to respond with a very low latency that can be challenging we have to sometimes join this data with external systems we have to also ensure that we are processing each event only once what happens if the system crashes how do you recover how do you ensure that none of the events are lost determining how do you update the sinks as new events arrive so these are some of the challenges that will come when we talk about stream processing now this is an overall a quick very quick snapshot of what is stream processing the disadvantages and use cases now let us dig deep into structured streaming in spark uh, how does what is structured streaming so a structured streaming is a scalable and fault tolerant stream processing engine which is built built on spark sql engine so spark has a sql engine the spark sql the structured streaming is built on top of that it uses existing structured apis in spark so spark has uh, sql dataset data frame all those apis are available structure streaming is based on those structured apis and this ensures that it is an end to end exactly once processing we do not process events twice it is fault tolerant 
why because there is checkpointing and water right ahead logs built in so it helps us in ensuring it is fault tolerant and we are processing events only once now when we talk about structured streaming in spark the cornerstone of this api is that we don't have to change the code if uh, if we have to go for uh, real time or patch so we should write the code or write the query in such a way that it works for both batch and streaming we only specify in what fashion we want to run it that's the cornerstone of this api and that's the thought process we should have while we are building this now let us look at the programming model how does spark structured streaming work so first of all we should always think about it as about this whole structured streaming as these are nothing but micro batches and all of these queries are structured streaming queries are processed using a micro batch processing engine this micro batch processing engine processes data streams as a series of very small small batch jobs thereby we are getting this 100 milliseconds latency as low as 100 milliseconds and it is exactly once so one event is processed exactly once and it gives us fault tolerant guarantees how because here we are treating the data that is coming in as small micro batches the key idea here is you should think of structured streaming as a live data stream which is getting appended into a table so if you have to imagine how it is happening just think of it as a data stream which has very small small micro batches that are coming in and imagine there is an unbounded table which has no starting no ending because we are talking about streams so it's just a table in which the data stream whatever new data stream comes it is getting appended to this unbounded table so this is the most simplistic way to look at structured streaming think of it as unbounded table new data stream just gets attached to that or appended to that unbounded table how, how does it work so what will happen is just look at this so this is a timeline let's consider that there is a trigger every one second and this is the input data that comes in so this is the chunk of data that comes in at first second this comes in at the second second t equal to 2 this comes in at the third second and what we are doing we are processing it immediately so if you see this line this parallel line uh, these are three parallel lines for three times at one second two second and three second but the moment that input data comes in we have a logic to process it it produces a result and it is put out to the sink or as an output now this is happening with all these micro chunks of data that we are getting one thing to remember is that when we say trigger trigger is nothing but we are triggering our processing logic to consume the data process it and publish the result so how it is working is it is working in this fashion that the query will run on the input it will generate the result table table is nothing but that unbounded table we spoke about where data is getting constantly appended it the time frame uh, or the trigger can be one second two second five second whatever we decide based on how we are getting the data but eventually it is updating a unbounded table and producing the result so that is how a structured stream works now let us look at some of the concept or terminologies which are important when we talk about streaming so first of all there is something called d stream or discretized stream short form is d stream this is the basic abstraction provided by spark streaming this is the smallest unit and what does it represent it represents a continuous stream of data either the input data stream which is received from a source or it can be a processed data stream which is getting generated after transformation from another stream but either ways this most smallest abstraction unit is d stream and internally if you look at d stream it is nothing but a continuous series of rdds rdd is a fundamental uh, building block of spark so this d stream uh, whatever we are representing in structured spark streaming will also get converted into an rdd so a d stream is nothing but a continuous series of rdds now if we look at this d stream 
data from time zero to because our interval interval was one second. So at one second we receive data, at two second, three second, four second. So all of these micro micro batches of data that we are getting will con get converted into an RDD which will be processed by Spark internally. So the basic fundamental unit here is DStream. Then source. What does source mean? Source means from where can we consume the streaming data. So largely in spark streaming there are two categories built-in store sources and uh, uh, there are two categories of built-in sources basic and advanced basic means sources which are directly available for the streaming context api so there is a api uh, for spark streaming which is streaming context api what are the basic sources like file system socket connections from where we can directly consume data these are basic sources that are supported there are also advanced sources, for example, Kafka, Kinesis, which are advanced sources that are also supported by Spark Streaming. So essentially, we can read data from all of these sources in near real time using Spark Streaming. Then sync. Sync is nothing but where we are writing the data back. So sync specify our destination wherever in that diagram that we previously saw where we are getting an input, we are appending into a table, processing and then outputting it. So the output or destination is the sync. Sync can be almost any type of file format. You can produce any type of file format. It can be a for each sync where we want to run arbitrary computations on the output records. It can be console. It can be a memory sync for debugging. It can be Apache Kafka. So there are a lot of possibilities. Uh, how do we output the data? Another important thing here to understand is output modes. What are output modes? Output is nothing but whatever we are writing out to an external storage after we process the data. This can be in different modes, typically three modes, complete mode, append mode and update mode. What does complete mode mean? Complete mode means the entire updated result table. So the result table is where we are constantly appending the new incoming data. Now if we output that entire updated result table to an external storage, it is known as a complete mode. And the storage container can decide how do we want to handle the writing of the entire table. But essentially we are writing the entire table out. Append mode means any row, new rows that got appended to our result table since the last trigger. What is a trigger? As I said, trigger is nothing but a point where we are triggering our processing to happen. We have written certain logic to operate on the input. That is my trigger. I have defined a trigger interval that after every two seconds I will initiate processing of the new data so whatever I did in the last trigger after that whatever new came in is what I will take and append to the external storage now this when is this applicable it is applicable only on the queries where existing rows in the result table are not expected to change why because if I know that whatever new data I got into my result table I am not going to change the previous data. In that case, I know whatever was previously written, I have already written it to the external storage. So append mode will take care of just identifying the incremental new data that came in and write it to external storage. Here, the only condition to remember is as and when new data is coming, getting appended, I'm just taking that much data and writing it out because I know I don't have to do anything with this data, joining it to the previous data or anything. So I can just pick up the changed data that came in and write it out. Other mode which is similar to append with a subtle difference, update mode. Now update is the rows which were updated in the result table since the last trigger will be returned to external storage. Now how it is different is here we are doing aggregations. Whatever data came in now got appended to the result table, we are aggregating it with the previous data or we are doing certain updates to the previous data. These are scenarios when we get new records which can be updates or freshly uh, given records. So if every time the records we get are new records then we can use a append mode. But if we are getting records which are actually updated versions of previous records then we may go for update mode. So these are the three modes in which we write data out. Complete, append and update. Other important concept is triggers. So just like output modes are defining what output should I write, triggers will define when should I write the output. So structured streaming should check for new input data and update the result. Right? 
trigger is just like we used to have triggers in database to trigger some action this trigger defines when the data should be output by default whenever we are using structured streaming it will look for new input records as soon as it gets some new input record it will process it and then produce the output but trigger will tell me when exactly should i produce that output because as i said trigger is what trigger is an action to do some processing on the data that has arrived and then write it to a external storage based on the mode that we have selected a complete or a append or an update now one problem that can happen is if we have triggers which are very very frequent let's say every second we may produce a lot of small output files which is not a desirable state that's why uh, spark gives us a flexibility to define our trigger based on a processing time right it may not be just a set interval but essentially triggers are helping us to uh, determine when to write the output to an external storage then comes watermarks watermarks is another important term to be understood when we talk about spark streaming these are features of streaming system that allow us to specify how late can they expect an event sometimes as i said in the beginning the disadvantage also of uh, streaming solutions data may arrive late it may arrive out of order so if an application processes logs which are coming from a mobile device some logs may come later like 30 minutes later due to some delays now a system that supports event time or which is capturing events over a time period will allow to have watermarks watermarks are nothing but a limit that how long should they remember the old data because some data is arriving absolutely late let's say 30 minutes an hour so watermarks lets us define till when you should remember the older data so if they are i know that the data is coming late and it is coming 30 minutes late my watermark should be to remember last 30 minutes of data because i want to process that together as a whole now these can also be used to control when to output a result for a particular time window so watermarks are very very important because late arriving data is a common scenario another thing uh, which is interesting to understand is windowing operation now in spark streaming it gives us windowing computations what does windowing computation mean so if we see this is the original d stream that comes to us so these are packets of data i am getting over time at let's say 1 second 2 second 3 second and so on and so forth now if i want to do a windowing that means what is the i am creating a virtual window to say that this is the time frame that i will try to look at together and process so i am defining my window let's say this is my window so i am actually looking at three chunks of data together and processing them so every time i slide the window over a source the source rdds that fall within the window are combined and operated upon to produce a rdd output rdd basically i am saying though i am getting these kind of five different chunks of data at each of one second interval but i don't want to process each you know data uh, batch in one shot i want to define a window and when i slide a window i know that these are the three on which i have created a window so i will pick up these three d streams and process them together and produce an rdd so it's very useful to logically group the data i want to process at one shot that's a window or a windowing operation so that was all about a brief summary of what is streaming and then what spark structured streaming a structured uh, streaming i hope this has helped you to clarify some of the concepts of how structured streaming works what are the different features provided so please like share and subscribe to the channel to get more interesting videos thank you so much